After listening to the couple for 15 minutes, the, the marriage counselor got up, walked over to the little old lady, picked her up, gave her a big hug, gave her a big kiss right on the lips, and sat her back down, walked over and told her husband, that's what she needs at least three times a week. And the old man looked at the counselor and said, okay, I'll bring her on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. <laughs> One of the greatest ways that you can romance your spouse is in very simple ways. I think we, we think we have to do these grandiose things and we don't. Hold her hand when you walk down the hall. Hold her hand when you're riding in the car. Sit beside her. Get off your recliner and go sit beside her. And put your arm around her. And hug on her. Our wives want to be held. They want to be hugged. They want to be heard. And here's the last one. Communicate to her through your thoughtfulness. Chapter 7, 10 through 13. I love my, I am my lovers, the one he desires. Come, my love, let us go into the fields and spend the night among the wildflowers. Let us get up early and go out to the vineyards. Let us see whether the vines have budded, whether the blossoms have opened, and whether the pomegranates are in flower. And there I will give you my love. There the mandrakes give forth their fragrance and the rare fruits are at our doors. The new as well as the old, for I have stored them up for you, my love. That scripture is pretty simple, isn't it? I know what some of you think. I can't believe you read that from the yeah. Pretty simple. She's planning a surprise trip for her husband, isn't she? Isn't that what she's doing? Come on, we're gonna we're gonna go. Yeah, come, my love. Let's go out to the fields and spend the night among the wildflowers. <laughs> no, not no ridge park. Okay? It's a thoughtful and creative way of showing her love for him. It's amazing how little things can become such big things. Our, our wives love little things, just little things. They like them when they least expect them. A card on the table in the morning. A flower on their pillow at night. Flowers for no reason at all. They like little things, but let me warn you, you know, a dust buster or a waffle iron ain't going to accomplish it. <laughs> not going to do it. It's not going to accomplish what you want it to accomplish. And, and, and tickets to the monster truck pull is not <laughs> going to do it either. All right? And I know this is going to disappoint a great many of you in this room, but tickets to the NASCAR race at Newton isn't going to do it either. Because they don't care. They don't care. Let me ask you this. Think about this now. I know I'm opening a whole lot of cans of worms here. Think about how much time you spend hunting or fishing. Ooh, I'm really going to get to meddling here. Golfing or bowling. Add all that up. And then compare it to how much time you spend with your wife or with your husband. I challenge you to add up those hours. I challenge you to look at those hours. How much time do you spend with all of those things compared to how much time do you spend with her? I had someone tell me the other day, you know, I just, my wife just needs to go do something other than with me. I, we, don't, we don't need to be together all the time. Let me tell you something. I want you to hear this. And I don't know where she is. I wish she were here. Is she out with James? or so? Okay. Well, maybe she's where she can hear me. There is nobody I would rather be with than my wife. Nobody. Nobody. Not another person. And, and, and I, I'm really dismayed in my heart when I hear guys say, oh, I just wish she'd go do something so that we don't have to be together all the time. Go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 4. 
You know, I love my kids. I love my grandkids. I, 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 you know, my family is everything to me, and you know that. But there's nobody I'd rather spend time with than my wife. You know, verse 12, chapter 4, Ecclesiastes. A person standing alone can be attacked. Are you listening to this? A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated. But two can stand back to back and conquer. They're even better for a triple braided cord is not easily broken. A lot easier to beat me up if I'm standing alone, isn't it? Not quite as easy when my wife is behind me with a nine millimeter protecting me, right? <laughs> Two people stand together a whole lot better and the protection is a whole lot better than when one person stands alone. And then there's a third one here when it talks about the braid. You can't braid hair with two strands, can you? You have to have how many? Three. The third strand that's woven into that braid is God, isn't it? If it's me, my wife, and God, then we got it made. When you have in your marriage that third party, when you have in your marriage God, when God is as much a part of your marriage as the two of you are, when he's a strand that is braided as evenly as the two of you are braided, then I promise you from the throne of God, he will hold your marriage together. He will do it. But if he's not, you're going to have a hard time standing. I don't know what shape your marriage is in. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's not going to work without Jesus. That's the foundation. We build our frame and our children, but the foundation that we put underneath them is the relationship that we have with each other in our marriage. There is no perfect marriage. Not anywhere, not anyhow, not, not, there just isn't. But there is a perfect God who can be the third strand in that braid that holds that marriage together when all hell comes against it. And I promise you, if you're married today, I want you to listen to me. All hell is going to come against your marriage. That's just the way the world is. Financial, sexual, uh, communication, uh, rumors, uh, whatever. Something's going to happen, whether it be emotional or physical or whatever. Something's going to So unless you're braided together, and I promise you, if you'll use that 10 minutes a day, a date every 10 days, go away together every 10 weeks, that that will do things for your marriage that you could not even imagine would ever happen. So I challenge you today to begin that right now. I, I challenge you today to say, from this point on, it's 10 minutes a day. It's a date every 10 days. It's go away together every 10 weeks. And that we're going to make God the third strand in our marriage. If you'll do that, your foundation will be strong. And your children will rise up, what's it say? And bless you, won't they? They'll rise up and they'll bless you. We got some wonderful kids in this church, some amazing kids, some talented kids that I, I hope I live long enough to watch them raise up and bless their parents. I want to see that happen. I want to see them bless their parents because there's no greater blessing than that. You know, I've been doing this long enough that I'm, I'm now, you know, watching kids that I dedicated and baptized and uh, get married you know, and have their own kids and, and dedicate their kids. And, and, you know, that's the perks of doing what I've done for the last 35 years is watching those kids grow up. In fact, in a couple of weeks, I have, I have the wedding of a young lady that I watched grow up in my church. And, and you know, that, that's where, where the blessings come, to watch children that are raised in a home with a solid foundation to rise up and bless their parents. Let me tell you what, it's never too late. I don't care if you've been married 50 years. It's never too late. Because your children will still watch what you're doing in your marriage. Let's pray. Gracious Father, we are so excited.
about what you're doing and how you're doing it. And you know, you've given us your word that teaches us if we'll just pay attention. You know, we, we try to do so much on our own. We try to make a way on our own. And while we can do that 10 minutes a day and that date every 10 days and, 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 and go away together every 10 weeks, unless we, we bind that cord with three strands, then we're going to be hard-pressed to accomplish it. Help us, O oh God, to seek you and seek you alone, to realize that maybe there's some things in our relationships that we need to change. We need to pay attention. We need to quit being so ego-centered and be blessed by what you're willing to give us. I thank you, Father, for your word. I thank you for how beautiful and how simple and how real it is and how practical the application is if we'll only do it. Help us to love our wives. Help our wives to love their husbands. Help us to put you in the middle of what we're doing, and we'll bless you for it. Every head's bowed and every eye is closed. If you're with us this morning, I, I'm not going to call you out. No one's going to embarrass you. But maybe God spoke to your heart this morning. Maybe God spoke to your heart about, about what your relationship is like. Maybe you realize there's some things you need to change. We all, have, we all, we all can do a better job. But maybe you realize there's really some things you can change. If there is, and you'd like me to pray for you, I'd love to do that. Just slip your hand up. By that you're saying, Pastor, thank you. Help me. Thank you. I need to do better. Thank you. I need to love my wife better. I need to love my husband better. I need to show him that a little bit more. I need to do something that really counts. Anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you. Take yourself off the pedestal. And God bless you. I was blessed. I was raised by a dad who treated his wife like a queen. My mom was always my dad's queen. And I don't know any other way to do it because I didn't learn any other way. Hopefully I've taught my son the same thing. God wants to be a part of what you're doing in your marriage. It doesn't mean that you have to go to church 14 times a week. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about loving each other in the way that you should. Anybody else before we go? Pastor, pray for me. Thank you. Father God, thank you. How you bless these. Encourage them. Be blessed by them. We'll give you praise. Amen. Hi, I'm Pastor Craig Bex. I want to thank you for joining us today on The Edge of Grace. We're excited about being a part of the KFXB family, especially excited to have you as a part of our family. It's our prayer that you were blessed by the program today, and that in some small way we were able to encourage you with God's word. You know, the most important thing that you can do for us is let us know that you've joined us. Would you do that? You can write us at the Edge of Grace, 621 Edgewood Road Northwest, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, 52405. Or you can go to our website, www.effcr.org, and there you'll find email addresses through which you can reach us. We're not selling a product, just sharing Jesus. But if you'd like to partner with us, you can send your gifts to the same address, 621 Edgewood Road Northwest, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, or online at our website. You'll find a Donate Online tab that you can use to send your gift to us that way. If you have a church home, I commend you to it. Encourage you to be faithful in your attendance and your giving. If you don't have a church home, we invite you to join us at Edgewood Family Fellowship, again located at 621 Edgewood Road Northwest in Cedar Rapids. Our worship service is at 10 o'clock each Sunday morning, and there's a great children's ministry during that time as well. We promise you unconditional love, uncompromised preaching, and unparalleled fellowship. Until next week, we pray you'll come and join us I think you'll be glad you did. You be blessed and be a blessing.